<laughs> All right guys, how are you doing? In this video, we're gonna be fixing this mess. So if you haven't seen that video guys, I'm gonna put a link to that just round about here somewhere. So damage wise, it's not as bad as it looks. I think it's just a chassis. You can see here, it's just ripped it clean off here on this end here as well. Luckily, I've got a spare kicking around. Oh, and it's pulled the wires out of the ESC as well. So we have to put some new connectors on there. And yes, this is the car that we done that crazy, stupid plastic turbine thingamajig on. Oh my God, that was epic. And if you haven't seen that video, guys, I'm gonna put a link to that just round about up here somewhere. By the way, I'm making this whole video on a Samsung Galaxy S9. So let me know in the comments what you think of the quality. Oh. All right, so first things first, chassis off, I guess. And remember where all the screws go when we reassemble. By the way, guys, if you're wondering what these are called, they're called power tool tips. Just type that into Amazon and you'll see them. And what I normally do, I do it up most of the way with this and I'll do the last little bit up by hand because it's so easy to strip out these plastic threads. Right, I think I'm going to try this without a wheelie bar this time because the silly thing last time, every time you jump it, it just comes unclipped. It, well, what a stupid invention and it's broken now anyway. Another little trick that I do, and I actually learned this from a couple of you guys in the comments in one of my earlier videos, is this part here, when you bash, it always pings out of the chassis, then you get all the mud and stuff, it builds up here. So what you can do is, I've already drilled the chassis through, you drill a hole all the way through, and you can either put a longer bolt there and that unbolt it, but because I haven't got any, I'm just gonna screw another screw just into there. And what that does, it just stops that pinging out every time. And I don't know why Traxxas didn't just do that from the get-go. I'm kind of guessing here a bit. Ah, what a good guess. Right, we're in. Because see now, that won't ping out. And literally, that was happening almost every other jump. That was pinging out. Someone did say about putting a cable tie around that. And I did try that before. And the cable tie just broke off. And also, it's just more likely to break the whole stupid thing. So, nah, I'm not going to bother with that. All right, so let's get the front end done now. Oh. Wrong way. Ah, oh, I didn't actually have to even take this part off. That could have stayed on there. All right, well I know that for next time. <laughs> I'm sure there's gonna be a next time. That chassis really did seem to break actually quite easily. But luckily they don't cost much. People keep saying to me to upgrade the shocks. They haven't broken yet. So when they do, then I'll do something. I've got some of these alloy shock caps sitting up here waiting. So if they pop off, I will put them on. But so far, they've been pretty good. Ah, one more thing that I am gonna do though, guys. If you can see here, I'll put a slot in the chassis to get the battery cables out because the, but the most of the lipos that I have that I put into this thing, that's where the wire has to go. So that bit's gotta come out. So I might as well do that now while the chassis is in two. It's actually easier to get in there now, then when it's got all that, all that other stuff sort of wrapped around there. So, I don't know what the best tool for the job is. Probably not this. We just use what we got laying around. No laughing, guys. All right, get in there. We just got to deburr it a little bit because we don't want any sharp edges where the battery leads go. It's normally used in metal work, so you can sort of get it into a hole and just sort of like deburr around the edges of stuff. All right. Try and put this back together again. Not a good trick, guys. When you're putting stuff back together, it's always better to leave it loose until you've got all the screws in there. Because it's going to make it easier lining it up. Because if you do them up tight and anything here doesn't line up, you're going to have a lot harder time. So it's always better to get all the screws, you know, in, get them in there sort of just half the way in or something. Once you've got all the screws in there, oh, wrong driver. Once you've got them all in there, then you can go ahead and tighten them all up. By the way, guys, if you're wondering what this is, it's called a power cap. And sometimes, if you draw a lot of current all in one go, 
your radio system can cut out. Like we call it a, a brown out over here in the UK sometimes. And um, what, what it normally is, is when there's like a big current spike, it sucks more power, so much power, that there's not enough power left to power on the receiver, and the whole lot will cut out. So that just keeps a little bit of energy sort of built in there, a bit like a battery. It just gives it that quick boost if and when it needs it. And pretty much all you do is you, just, you can just plug that in, in sort of any of the spare receiver slots. Not these top two, not the RPM and the very top, but in this other bank along here, any one of them, any spare one, you can go ahead and plug that in. All right, so I've got to sort out all these knackered cables now. I'm gonna do it a little bit different this time. I'm gonna leave the lead coming out of the ESC short, and then I'm gonna put an extension lead in there and leave this part here sticking out, because that way then, if, it, if I crash and do the same thing again, it can just come and pull the plug apart, rather than ripping apart the wire. One good little trick, guys, if you want to strip the wires, it can be really fiddly when you've got thin wires, so you just heat the end up, and you've got to do it for a couple of seconds. Look at that, come straight off. Couple of seconds on there, don't need much heat. You just, just literally pull that off with your fingers. All right, so all that's left now is to stick this ESC back on and the switch, and then we can see if it works. And I don't really want this mounted too tightly because if that snaps away again, it's probably better that it comes off easily. Otherwise it's gonna start ripping all of these wires here out as well. All right, so I've got a 4S LiPo here. And the reason I'm using that is, well, because it's charged. So you can see here, that's why we have to do that little slot so those wires can come out. Here we go. Here's another little trick that I'd like to do, guys. You stop this balance lead or wobbling about. If you just get, you get yourself a rubber band, we'll probably do if doing it a little bit tighter. And just wrap that around there a few times. And then it just keeps that balance lead, you know, keeps it attached to that and just stops it all flapping about. Because I've ripped so many of these off in my time, guys. And once that's off, well, you can put another connector on it, but it's not really that easy. And if it starts shorting out and everything, then it's game over. Lipo for the dustbin. With that rubber band on there, at least it keeps it all nicely self-contained. Four S, no wheelie bar. That's going to be fun, guys. <laughs> All right, let's get it outside. I'm not really a two-wheel drive fan, to be honest, because it's so hard to slow down. The minute you touch your brakes, it's like yanking up the handbrake. See, with four-wheel drive, you just kind of drift it around, you can use your brakes with this, I've just got to nurse it around everywhere. Oh, it works, just put it away while it still works. <laughs> Backflip! Let's try that again. I wasn't expecting that to work actually. Sorry about the crappy lighting guys, but I can't be bothered to go turn the lights on. Right. Ha ha ha! Oh my good God. I always hear a lot of comments of people saying, why don't I bring the rustler out more? Well, to be honest, I have quite a hard time with it. I, I don't really enjoy it as much as I do a four-wheel drive. With like a slash four-wheel drive or with a UDR, or even the X-Max, you can kind of hammer it around. You've got brakes on the front wheels, and it, it's just easy to drive. Like, two-wheel drive for me, guys, I really struggle. I did race back in the day. I used to race a little bit of two-wheel drive, and I was absolutely useless. I couldn't even get the thing around the track. And it was set up perfectly, because my buddy set it up, and he could win with exactly the same car. So it's just me not having the skill. And I see a lot of people say, well, there's no skill in four-wheel drive. But for me, it's not about the skill. I don't really care how difficult or how easy it is. I just care how much fun it is. And for me, two-wheel drive, um, every now and then, but definitely four-wheel drive for me. So much more fun. So alright guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, smash that bell button, stay notified. Also, remember guys, if you want me to answer a comment, I'll sit in my PC for 30 minutes after I upload a video. The thing is, I'm getting so many comments nowadays on Facebook, on Instagram, on um, YouTube, and I just, I just cannot keep up with them all. And even though I do really appreciate every single message, guys, 
I just can't see, there's just so many of them, I can't, I can't, I can't even read them all now, there's just so many. So I'll sit here for 30 minutes now guys, and I'm going to answer as many as I can in that time frame. So hit that bell button guys, the minute I upload a video you'll be notified, leave a comment, and I'll do my very best to answer. Alright guys, see you soon.